Hello, good day to you all, my fans. Welcome to this lesson on female reproductive system. We want to start by looking at the external female genitalia, then internal female genitalia, and we are going to relate to the process of conception and gestation. And in the process, we are going to correlate or relate all these structures on how they are, how they are appear on ultrasound. Starting off by external female genitalia. First of all, the female reproductive system is divided into two. We have internal female genitalia and we have external female genitalia. So, by the way, we are going to start with the external female genitalia. The external female genitalia are the structures found outside the body within the perineum. Um, this composed of labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, vestibule, vestibular glands, vaginal orifice, and hymen. These structures, these external female genitalia collectively are called vulva. Vulva. Collectively they are called vulva. Then after external female genitalia, we have internal female genitalia, genitalia which are located inside the female pelvis. This consists of vagina, uterus, ovaries, right and the left ovaries, ovarian uh, um, uterine tube, formerly called fallopian tube. But let us first think about the external female genitalia. For in the beginning of the lesson, I said that I'm going to start with external female genitalia or external female reproductive tract. So, as I mentioned them, this consists of uh, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, vestibules and vestibular glands, vaginal orifice and hymen. So, starting with the labia majora. Labia majora, labia means lips, majora means big. So, it's just a composed of a skin, connected tissue, vestibular glands located on the outside of the vagina. And it is the area where the fibrous hair grow up. This is called labia majora. Then after the labia majora, if you call if you go in, you go reach a something we call a labia minora. Labia means leaf, minora means a small. So it's just a small lips inside the vagina that consists of vestibular glands which formerly known as Bartholin glands. The Bartholin glands produces produces a lubricious pillow which keep the vulva lubricious, which keep the vulva um, smooth and lubricious. After the labia minora then we have clitoris. Clitoris is just a finger like projection found inside the vagina and it consists of erectile tissue just like a Penal, penal penis in men. Um, if you go to embryology, it is analogous to penis in man, which erect during sexual arousal. So in female, the clitoris erect during sexual arousal. After the clitoris, then we have the vestibules and the vestibular gland also there. And we have the vaginal orifice and hymen. Vaginal orifice means the often of the vagina from the outside. And then we have the hymen. Hymen is just a bascul it's just a vascularized membrane found outside the vagina, covers the external orifice of the vagina. And then uh, this hymen, some people um, wrongly said uh, this hymen is a markup or meaning that a woman is a virgin. This is not really, this is totally not a true because even the female is a virgin, sometimes this hymen can be can block. As a result of strenuous exercise, jumping, lifting, gymnastic and other forms of strenuous activities can break this hymen even though the woman is virgin. So the virginity the hymen cannot define a virginity in a woman. It's just a layer of connective tissue that covers the surface of the vagina in women. 
and as I said, all these are collectively known as vulva. And then moving to the internal female genitalia, as I said, they are found inside the pelvis, which consists of vagina, uterus, two ovaries, two fallopian tubes. All these structures they are found inside the female pelvis, and they are found between the urinary bladder, which is located anteriorly, and the rectosegmoid column which is located posteriorly. So all these structures are found between the bladder anteriorly and the sigmoid and rectosigmoid column posteriorly. So starting off from the vagina, vagina is just a muscular tooth that arises from the vulva to the external to the external os of the cervix. So it is just a muscular tooth that uh, arise that come from the vulva to the external uh, os of the cervix that is vagina then the ovaries or, or the uterus the uterus is um is actually a p-shaped organ found between the urinary bladder anteriorly and the rectosegmoid column posteriorly this uterus as i said it has a p-shape just like your gallbladder which has a p-shape and then uh, we also call it womb or the uterus. It is a normal place where the uh, embryo is planted during gestational period. And this uterus is divided into three parts. The body, the uppermost of the uterus is called the, uh, sorry, uh, it is divided into three, which is uh, divided into three. The upper portions of the uterus is called pundus. And the middle large portion of the uterus is called body or corpus. Then if you move down, the lower part is called cervix, which consists of internal and external os of the cervix. And then uh, this is a part of the uterus. Then the uterus, uh, the wall of the uterus has a three layer. The innermost layer is called endometrium, which is shed during menstruation period. And this endometrium is a normal place, is a normal place for embryo implantation. When fertilization occurs inside the Pallophian tooth, that fertilized egg will be implanted inside the inner layer of the uterus called endometrium. And as I said, it is a layer that is shed during menstruation. And then the appearance of this endometrium on ultrasound is based on the paces of menstruation period. After the endometrium, if you come outside, then we have the myometrium. Myo means muscles and the metrium means uterus. So it is found just after the endometrium if you come toward the outside. So it is the actual muscles of the uterus that contract during labor. And uh, it consists of receptor for oxytocin. That when oxytocin is bind to the myometrium, the myometrium will contract pushing the baby outside and then sonographically these myometrions appear homogeneous smooth and homogeneous ecotextual when there is inhomogeneity when there is inhomogeneity or irregularities inside the myometrion it indicates that there is something going on wrong inside the myometrion such as fibroid adenomyosis and other um, um, malformation of the myometrium. Then the perimetrium, which is the outermost layer of the uterus, it is just a peritoneum or parietal peritoneum, which on normal circumstance we cannot see perimetrium on ultrasound scan. That is about the uterus. And then remember, the uterus has three uh, position. We have antibiotic uterus. The uterus, which is uh, located more anteriorly toward the uh, urinary bladder, and we have the retrobatic uterus, the uterus which are located more posteriorly toward the rectosigmoid column, and we have the midline uterus. But all these three positions are normal position of the uterus. After the uterus, then we have the ovaries. Ovaries are two oval structure found on either side of the fallopian tube we have two ovaries right and the left ovaries 
this ovaries consists of um, consists of what we call uh, medulla and uh, cortex just like a kidney consists of medulla when we say medulla we means the internal part of the ovary when we say cortex we mean the external part of the ovaries so this this ovaries um, it consists of uh, polycles inside and then it is the uh, organs that undergoes oogenesis what I mean by oogenesis oogenesis means just a production of egg around 14 days of the menstruation period there is something we call the ovulation ovulation phase remember the menstrual period has almost four phases uh, number one menses follicular phase ovulatory phase and secretory phase the follicle the ovulatory phase occur around 14 days of the 28th cycle so during these days the ovaries will ovulate and ultrasound when you are scanning a woman of childbearing age around 14 days of the menstruation period you will see a many follicles inside the uterus with one dominant follicles these follicles are just that produces the egg but this the egg is produced by that large dominance follicles it ruptures and produces the egg on our sound you can see all these follicles with the with the large dominant follicles they are ju you just see them like a cyst Sometimes you can diagnose it as ovarian cysts, but they are not the ovarian cysts. They are just a normal follicles inside the ovaries. And uh, remember, the ovary, the appearance of the ovary on ultrasound is uh, dependent on the paces of the menstruation cycles and also the condition of the ovaries because there is a lot of pathology that affect the ovaries, such as simple cysts, complex cysts, and uh, uh, what you call uh, opoporitis and others. Um, we have the then the next one is fallopian tube. Fallopian tube is just a muscular tube that connects the uterus to the ovaries. It connects the uterus to the ovaries. The fallopian tube it has a uh, it has a fat. The fat of the fallopian tube consists of the infundibulum, the pimbria and the ampulla and the stimulus. It's just a long tube that connect the ovaries bilaterally to the uterus medially. So that is a fallopian tube. And the fallopian tube is the main area of fertilization within the ampulla region of fallopian tube. When the egg is released from the ovaries, the egg will move into the fallopian tube. By the time the sperm has reached the ampulla region, then they will unite, then the fertilization will occur in that area, forming a fertilized egg or a zygote. Because of the peristaltic activity and the uh, help of the cilia, the fallopian tube has a cilia inside that rough the that rough that rough this fertilized egg with the help of peristaltic activity and move it toward the uterus where it is going to be implanted in the uh, what we call a endometrium. So this is just a brief lecture about the female genitalia consisting of external female genitalia and the internal female genitalia. This is just an anatomy and some little bit about physiology of these structures. And then um, this is very important for people that are doing scanning although this is just an anatomy fat we are going to correlate this anatomy with the ultrasound how all these structures external female genitalia and the internal female genitalia how they appear on an ultrasound what i mean how they appear i means normal echogenicity normal size and the normal echotexture of this structure on ultrasound so we are going to do lecture correlating or relating all these organs to the uh, how they are appear on ultrasound image thank you so much please if you are if you benefit from this video please watch it from the beginning to the end
please like it subscribe it and then comment and then share to the groups and individuals thank you so much this can help us to make another videos especially for people who are learning scan because this is this is going to be on ultrasound scan we are going to do videos on obstetric scan pelvic scan gynecological scan but for you to understand all this scanning is good to understand basic about anatomy and physiology of the female genitalia thank you so much thank you so much